Well, that doesn't look very good.
gave her this gold nugget necklace. So, and this is from one of his Hawaiian trips. He bought this and ended up giving it to Billy Smith's wife, Jo, just for good luck. It's just a trinket, you know, but I, I really thought it was cool. It's not the one from the Brady Bunch that everyone thinks it is. <laughs> How are you? Good, how are you? Good, good. And this was actually his jewelry box from his conference room up upstairs at Bryce. Uh, Lisa Marie was uh, coming. That's the one they were expecting. They were the first day. Oh, okay. <laughs> Sweet. Yeah. So when there's... the light bulb goes off, that's what that sounds like. That's what it sounds like. Well, I'm sure people have walked by all day and been like, why is that picture there? Mm -hmm. so, but um, there's, he rehearses in, a, in Hollywood and Very then cool. they show up at the International and they do that session with the backup singers. Yep. And he's using this the whole time. And one of the sound engineers grabbed that and the cord. Wow. So that's kind of cool. Interesting story about the Shore SM58, which I discovered in my research, which was that uh, they came up with this microphone in the mid-60s for radio and television, and it wasn't doing very well, and they were going to discontinue it. And the national sales manager goes to Vegas in 70 and says, well, let me try one more thing. And he gives these microphones to all the ballrooms that do shows. And then he comes back and services services them. Well, the entertainers loved it because there's no feedback. It's built like you can hammer nails with it. So it's a really good on-stage mic, just as it turns out. And that's why it was there in the ballroom at the International, because that sales manager had, had just gotten all the mics into all the ballrooms for nothing. So that was uh, the kind of... Uh, but because of that move, this became the rock and roll microphone for the next 50 years. Like, it's still in use today. They love it because they can move around with it. It doesn't have any feedback. It's it's a really great mic for live performance. It's Shure is the brand name. Shure SM58. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's kind of cool. Yeah. Do you know where that uh, scarf is from? Uh, it's from. He handed that to a gentleman from the stage in the. Uh, 75, I think it was in 75. Okay. Yeah, in Asheville, North Carolina. Oh, okay, that's a good show. Yeah. And then, um, this for the trench coat. This is private investigator. Elvis gave the trench coat to. Well, Grady's got a big Elvis connection because he actually worked on the Palimony case in 1970. And then he actually wrote a book about his super detective life, and Elvis actually read a copy of it on stage one time. I sold that book that he read on stage a couple of years ago. That was kind of cool. So there's actually a very... You guys will appreciate this. Anita Wood is actually in there as well, which is kind of nice. This is So it has to be 61, because by 62, that's over. There's a nice Anita Wood signature. A bunch of other, a bunch of, other of her classmates signed the book <laughs> that are all dated 61. This was at a football game. Yeah, she used to go to, she'd find Elvis anywhere. She'd go to the gate. She was, you know, she was it. But she, she took a famous group of photos that we all know from him playing football. She's the one who took a particular set of those that we've all seen. This is from a young singer named Jimmy Tennant. He was a fixture in those days around Elvis. That's cool. A couple years later, everybody knew him better as Jimmy Velvet. Oh, okay. I was like, who is Jimmy Tennant? When I was looking this up, I'd never heard that name before. I, he used it for a brief, it was his real name, I think, and he used it for a brief period before he changed the stage. Before he changed the stage. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. 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 I guess he managed another guy named Jimmy Velvet with a V-I-T. And then when they split up, Jimmy changed his name to Velvet with a V-I-T. This is the whole file. There's actually a whole other folder as well of Vernon's. It was Vernon's and Elvis's files from the Shelby County Sheriff's Department getting their deputies licenses. So it's great. It's all this paperwork. He signed it four times, his mugshot. Plus it's got IDs from the other guys with it. It's kind of a fun little file. 
and, the, and four really nice Elvis autographs. 56 RCA signed photo. That's you see a ton of the sons, all the four different sons, because he was so accessible. Those guys signed thousands of them. By 56, he's Elvis. Much harder to get to, so you don't see this RCA 56 and in signed good shape, as, too. Signed as on, or on the front either. It's signed on the front as well, which is great. Mm -hmm. That's why it's got a little jumpiness to it because of the gloss, but usually yeah. they'd be signed on the back of those. Yeah, so, I have one on the back. Yeah, most of them are, the and you don't see too many 56s.